Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage. Today's show is part one of a three-part interview we did with the great drummer Artemis Powell from Leonard Skinner. In this clip, Artemis talks about how he took over drums from, from Bob Burns, who was the original drummer with, with Leonard Skinner, and his love of the musicians that were in that band, you know, like Ed King, the guitar player, uh, also talks about other musicians that he loved, like the Picaro brothers that were with Toto, and, and, and Toto itself, what a great band they were as session musicians. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Once again, part one with Artemis Powell. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame backstage. Today's guest is the great Artemis Powell, drummer with Leonard Skinner. Artemis, thank you so much for, for coming in today. Well, I, I'm honored to be here just from what I've seen of the museum so far. Uh, it, you, I could spend hours in every single display, so thank you. We'll hit it again before you leave. You know, I had no idea that there was going to be so many sets of drums. and. Uh, I, I can't help but think about Bob Burns. You know, Bob, um, on that first album with Leonard Skinner, mm -hmm. you know, Bob played on The Ballad of Curtis Lowe and S Sweet Home Alabama. Um, he and I were inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I, I just can't help but think about him coming through here and us you know, being together, uh, we've got that in common. We were the drummers of Leonard Skinner and we're both in the Hall of Fame because of Ronnie. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Ronnie would love this too. Ronnie would love this. Man. Uh, I didn't know, I knew Ed King was a good friend, but I, I, I don't think I knew anybody else in the band but, but Ed though. And he lived here and he, and he, he, he did come to the museum to the to the first one. I'm not sure if he came to this location or not, but he was a great guy, great guitar player. I, I love Ed. I, I loved Ed a lot. And uh, the, the guitar players that play with our band, uh, APB, they, they got to come up and sit with Ed and get straight from the master, you know, how to play a lot of those songs. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people can say that. And uh, Ed, Ed was quirky, man. He was a funny guy. But he was a great person, and he was truly talented and, and uh, unique in, in the way that he played guitar. That's why when I first got with Skinner, you know, you've got Gary, his style, Alan's style, mm -hmm. and then Ed's style. Kind of a West Coast thing on, and it was all, it all wor it worked. It worked. And then when we lost Ed, because he was just tired of the road, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, and we got Steve Gaines, uh, the magic happened again. Yeah, I but, loved him too. But even yeah. different because Steve, of course, all guitar players are so unique in their style and their background and what influenced them. Uh, you know, I'm a drummer. And when I hold a guitar, I feel like I'm holding a baby. You know, I'm like, ay, ay, you know. But uh, I've got lots of favorite guitar players and I've had the the I've been lucky enough to play with some of the greatest guitar players Amen and, to that, and, and, yeah. and I still is yeah I yeah. still is playing yeah. because you know it's it's not over till it's over well, you're in town recording a new album now we're, right? we are yeah. we're working on a a tribute album to Ronnie Van Zandt mm -hmm. and his band and all all of the guys that were in the band I am one of those people um, I never dreamed about being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that's not something when I was a kid, first starting to play drums, banging on pots and pans. I'm, Mom, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Never even dreamed that. I never thought about that kind of uh, success. Yeah. But because of Ronnie Van Zant and all the guys in the band, and that includes Gary Rossington and Alan and Billy and Leon and, mm -hmm. and Bob Burns, they did this thing. And it was real good, and a lot of people liked it. 
uh, Ronnie told me a couple times that he didn't think he could sing. And I was like, well, man, you got something going on because people all over the world love you and love the music and love the songs and love the band. Um, but that's something I wanted to talk to you about. I'm just going to throw this in. Um, Bob Burns deserves to be in the Musicians Hall of Fame. He needs to have something. And I've got a piece of his that I carry in my trailer. It's one of his, the top of one of his drum cases. But that guy played on Curtis Lowe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Simple Man, Sweet Home Alabama, all these great iconic songs. Um, before they ever knew I was alive, I, I was a sergeant walking my post in a military manner, you know, in the Marine Corps mm -hmm. uh, when Bob did that. And he truly deserves to have a little place because the fact that Skinnered music transcends all of the genres. Saturday Night Special is almost heavy metal. That's me. That's when I came along. Uh, Freebird, of course, gets into the, the metal world where it's just like, to, you know, uh, the pedal to the metal. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like, you know, I, I'd love for you guys to um, determine that. And I, I think of, of all these great drummers that you've displayed that, I, that I've seen that deserve to be here. I think Bob does. So that's just something I wanted to throw in there. I think he does, too. I think you do, too. No, it, no. It, but, I, I, I mean this with all my heart. Bob does. I don't. And, and I, I'm not trying to be a false modesty or anything like that. Bob did something. You know, I, I came along when they needed me. Bob had some medical issues. Mm -hmm. He couldn't continue. They needed a drummer because they were hitting it. These guys were hitting their stride. So, you know, my first gigs with them were like 100,000, 300,000, you know, they, they, and I'm going, wow, this is cool. But, but Bob truly has that story from the roots. Now, I've got my story too. Uh, but, but truly, I, I mean that. Bob, Bob deserves it, and I, I'd love to see that well, happen. Let me say, this, the way that that happens is I don't just go, hey, you're in the Musicians Hall of Fame. It you <laughs> get a Buick, and you get a new car. And you, yeah, yeah, okay. No, that's not. The way, the way it works is um, you have to be nominated by your peers. And so after our, the first induction ceremony, I'll do the same real briefly. I'm a uh, peer. You're a peer, all right. And... and uh, the first time that in 2007, after we opened in 06, in 07 we had our first induction, and we had sent a lot of ballads out to a lot of music industry people, songwriters, drum, uh, musicians, uh, producers, rangers, and let them pick who they'd like to see go in. After our first year, the president of the musicians union in New York was at the show, and they endorsed us, and so then the musicians union members were allowed to nominate who they wanted to see go in Musicians Hall of Fame. And all those names go into a pool. They never leave, even after they're inducted, because they could be inducted like Eric Clapton two or three times according to who all they played with or whatever they did. So that's how you get in. Now, Leonard Skinner has obviously been nominated as a band to go in. Sure. Um, ironically, uh, and you'd know this more than anybody else I could ask, is unless Ronnie played an instrument we can only induct the musicians from the band, not the singers, because the singers get plenty of recognition from other halls of fame. I, and, I understand that. And that's why we did this. I have sat in a room with Ronnie, and Ronnie had a six-string. But did he play on your records, and he, though? He, he could play. I mean, he wasn't like, you know, he, he wasn't, you know, uh, the, 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 the hottest. I mean, he could play chords. Yeah. But uh, but he didn't play it on stage. Yeah, yeah. So that would you know. so like when we you said you love Toto, when we inducted Toto, I love their singer, but Bobby Kimball. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But hold the line. Uh, yes. Oh my God. And but we got uh, Rascal Flatts to perform with them, and in their in Rascal Flatts singer, uh, singers did hold the line and oh my God. Uh, at, at the award show. With I them. can't imagine when was that. Uh, Two thousand nine, I think eight or nine. 
because yeah. I know every one of those guys. I I love them. Yeah. With all the Percaro brothers. Yeah. Jeff Percaro. I went. I I flew all the way out to Jeff Percaro's funeral. Yeah. Um, and I I told he Joe. He had already passed away by the time they, we inducted him. Right. Yeah. Well, I told Joe Percaro, his father. Mm -hmm. He was there. Yeah. Um, and and I told Joe. I said I flew out here from the South, you know, to represent all the Southern drummers. Uh, and he, he got tears in his eyes. He said, you flew all the way from Florida to be at my son's funeral here in LA. And I was like, yes, sir. I would have flown all the way around the world. He, Jeff was so loved mm -hmm. and it was such a pocket drummer mm -hmm. and, and everything. And uh, I smoked a joint with him one time. <laughs> it was great. Um, it was Hawaiian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the best for Jeff, um, but I, I I admired him so much, and I loved Toto, so I you know, I I, I was friends with all those guys. Steve Luthiker, yeah, what, Steve's great. And him. David Page played on one of my right. albums. Yeah, David was here. I was actually at David's house. He calls it Hog Manor, mm -hmm. when he was doing the soundtrack for Dune. Mm -hmm. They sent him these huge screens, before flat screens. And he had his whole living room full of it, and he was writing the score to the movie Dune. Mm -hmm. And he said, Artemis, I want to show you this new thing, man. You know, and I said, what is it? He took me back. He showed me an email. <laughs> he said, I can get messages from all over the world. And I was like, wow, how does that work? Are there little tubes? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know what it was. Still don't. Uh, I've never touched a computer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, yeah, Toto... Um, what, what a band, and Steve Percaro and Mike Percaro. Well, David Hungate, the bass player, lives here. D David? Yeah, yeah. Man, and I, I just saw a European thing that they did with that singer. They came out and did, I think they played in France. Mm -hmm. They were so good, man. Those da 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 those, those odd time signatures that only those session cats can work out. Africa? Yeah. Man, oh, man. Yeah, Lukather has been playing. He's been, I think he's... The long, the been with the Ringo Stars um, uh, All Star Band longer than anybody, and he, he plays with Ringo every time they go out on tour. Does, does he? Let me tell you, I, I met Paul when we opened up for the Rolling Stones in Nebworth. I got to hang out with Paul. I, I love Paul. I've always wanted, of course, as a drummer, to meet Ringo, and um, I, I'm I'm not gonna push it, but if it if it if it's meant to be, it will happen. But that is so cool, you know. I I, lo I love his band. I want to maybe catch the band sometime. Um, but did you have you seen Get Back? Let it let oh, it the, be. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the whole the, the, the three parts. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Man, I have never seen anything for years. I, my heart was broken because Yoko broke up the band, and the band they were they all hated each other, <clears throat> and all this nonsense. They loved each other. Yeah, yeah. They were having a ball. <clears throat> now, they might have been smoking a lot of weed. <clears throat> I know that they were smoking a lot of cigarettes. That all, almost made me sick. Every, every single scene, they were, they were, everybody had like, <sighs> putting them out, lighting them, putting them out, lighting them. Because I hate cigarettes. But, but <laughs> uh, that was so cool to see them working with each other mm -hmm. and forming those songs and then playing on the rooftop. Mm-hmm. And when the cops came in and busted them, I mean, that I, I cried. I, I mean, I every one of those segments, <clears throat> my son Marshall set it up for me so we could watch it. And I, I mean, tears came to my eyes seeing Ringo playing those cool chops, man. And you know, he says he does not rehearse. He said he hates yeah. rehearsing by himself. Oh, he looked bored. He looked so bored. He, he said, I only want to play when, when I'm playing with somebody. I don't just sit around and play by myself, you know. But they had a they had a, a a certain discipline, and it's like with the discipline that I met with Ronnie Van Zant was I would at ten o'clock in the morning the band would show up at this cabin out in the middle of a hundred acres in Florida, and I lived in that cabin, and Ronnie would show up, and these guys would work hard all day long from ten o'clock, you know, um, until Ronnie was satisfied, and he'd make. Uh, he'd make the band do songs 50 times in a row. You know, everybody would be going, please, Ronnie, we got it, you know. 
one more time, Sweet Home Alabama, two, three, you know, and it's like, I, and I, as a Marine, I was in very good shape, and as a physical drummer, to me, the more the merrier, bring it on, let's play it again. But, you know, uh, uh, his discipline was to play the song so much you didn't have to think about what was coming, just how hard you wanted to nail it, in my case. With them, how sweet you wanted to make it, how you wanted to bend that note. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'd get on a stage in front of 100,000 people, and we'd, be, we'd know that stuff. That's why all the other bands of the day, Journey and Foreigner, that all opened up for us, even Carlos Santana, all, all of them said, you guys are tight, you know. And, and the, band, we, it was so, the band was so tight. Al Cooper said that, that, he, the, that the band was... Well, we inducted Al. You, you inducted Al. I love Al, and what what a guy, what a strange character. Mm, yeah. uh, but he said that um, they were a dream because every guitar solo was played the same way. Right. Every single. That's time. what I love about Tom Petty. Mike Campbell plays it every time. Spot on. Right? Spot on. Right. Alan could do that. Gary mm -hmm. could do that. Mm -hmm. Ed did that constantly. Now you talk about how Ronnie drove you guys to, you know. But what I really loved that I heard about him was. Uh, when y'all did Sweet Home Alabama, he went to uh, Cooper and said, hey, uh, the album was about to come out that you, they just recorded. And he says, I want to go back in the studio and cut this song because I'm afraid if we play it for a year, it's not going to have... It'll the, change. The magic dust will be gone. And so they went back in right then and cut it and kept it in the can for a year, knowing that they had this monster just sitting there waiting, you know. But but they'd rather do that. Ed but, told you that, right? Uh, no, no. Or, or no. Al Cooper. Al Cooper. Okay, yeah, because Ed 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 had said that also. Uh, the, and and I saw that in that documentary, where Al, you know, was saying he didn't want to lose it. Yeah. He, he Ronnie wanted, didn't. He, Ronnie you know, said, yeah. He, and then Ed told a story about how Ronnie went down to the river that where the cabin was and i went to that river many times mm -hmm. there were alligators in it yeah. i was afraid an alligator was going to bite me in florida man there's always something that wants to sting you bite you uh pinch you you know <laughs> there's something crawling around and um but ronnie went uh, they gary and and ed came up with the little riff ronnie said wait a minute and he went down to the dock came back he never wrote anything down that's what he said yeah i never saw him do that and ed said that too came back had the words had all the words and it was it was done and then they he wanted to cut it immediately and before it before it changed mm -hmm. and because uh, it was he, he ronnie man he knew he that guy was such a prolific writer and had such an ear for stuff you know and uh, one of the licks that I play now, when I play drums, was a lick that I invented for Ronnie Van Zant, because he said, Artemis, I want you to play something real fast right here, you know, throw something in there real fast, you know. And um, I didn't come up with the lick until after Ronnie was gone. Mm. And so that's my, it's, it's half of a, a triplet. It's half a triplet. And I go into roles like that, and it's just, it doesn't even sound right, but it, I did it for Ronnie. And it's just like Ronnie taught me how to whistle, you know, that I won't yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, because I, I could blow the cameras out, yeah. the, the speakers. But Ronnie taught me how to yeah. chirp. And it didn't happen until after Ronnie was gone, after the plane crash, because I was riding around up in the mountains in my Jeep with the windshield down, bugs on my teeth, you know, just riding around, and I was tr trying to remember what Ron, how Ronnie said to hold your lips and put your tongue and all this kind of stuff. And then, because he used to do it to call the the truck back when a, a parts truck would go out, he somebody'd call in another part and he'd whistle to get it back. So I was slobbering all over myself and spitting and you know trying to get, and a little chirp came out, and now I can do the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> you know I won't. I won't do it, but I can whistle really loud, and that whistle without using my. Well, fingers. he did that in a song, didn't he? Didn't he? Oh that, yeah, that, that, yeah. I Saturday Night Special. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back.